Hey, Battle Bill here with another video, and today we're going to get into even more Great League Go Battle League battles. Boy, do I have a set for you guys. So, alright, um, I looked through my comment section, and I picked a subscriber's team to work with for one set of Go Battle League battles, like I said I would, and I obviously had them recorded, and we're going to go through them. Honestly, the way I went about picking it was... I don't want to say completely random, I've looked through the comment section, and I found the one that kind of just like caught my attention the most and seemed the most unique, and it turned into a pretty fun set. So what I'm going to do is obviously I'm going to go through the team and talk about it, and I'm going to give as much information as I can, but what you also have to take under consideration is I'm no expert, and a lot of... Uh, my skill comes from just constantly playing. I'll run simulations on PV Poke from time to time, but I'm not one of those hardcore PVPers where I'm just constantly looking at sim after matchup after sim after matchup. I've only gotten as good as I am by just constantly playing or playing as much as I possibly can. Just because that's just more enjoyable for me. To each their own, honestly. I'm not knocking you if you do it a different way. Just understand that I won't know every single matchup. And I will make mistakes, especially with brand new teams. Um, what I'm also going to do is at the end of this video, I'm going to give a rating for every subscriber team. Like every video I put out and every subscriber team I go over. At the end, I'm going to give a rating. If I recommend it, I'll give it like on a scale of 1 to 10. 10, highly recommend. 1, don't try it at all. Um... I'm not, I'm not going to name names unless, again, you want me to. Like, when you list your team, be like, yeah, shout me out. And, like, when you list your team, and I'll be like, all right, no problem. But um, this person didn't mention that. And I also don't want you to take any negativity as criticism because I know I've gotten negativity on my comments, um, in my comment section on other videos about my double mud boys and whatnot. And I want to I wanna give... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I guess advice or critiques, I guess, in the most humble way and least negative way as I possibly can. But some of the teams that I'm going to decide to pick are going to have some flaws in them. And this one definitely does. But this one was a fun one to use. So by all means, it was, it was, this is definitely an interesting set. So the team, let's go over it. The team I decided to go with for my first, well, my second subscriber team since I started doing Great League is a double charm strat. This double charm strat consists of Wiggly Tough as the lead, Clefable in the back, and then Alolan Marowak in the back. And obviously, right off the bat, the biggest weaknesses that you would assume would be something like Registeel, something like Bassidon. Um, we're going to get into that. We'll talk about some possible strengths and why I found this team interesting to try and use. But let's talk about the first battle here. So, this first battle. Got a great lead. I got everything I could look for. I start to do a couple charms. I realize we're lagging. And then I feel bad. I'm just kind of sitting there. I throw one charm every other second. I start to throw them a little bit faster. I start to stop and then throw, stop and then throw. I'm waiting to see if whatever happened. Maybe he just saw my Wigglytuff and he had that Altaria lead. And he was just like, nope, no way I'm going to win this. I'm going to just let him have this match no matter what I have in the back. But like, I felt bad. I essentially just decimated his Altaria. And now I'm waiting to see if he's going to be able to come back. If this was even lag. Because honestly, on my ends, there wasn't any lag. So I don't know what happened here. And he brings in a Tentacruel, which would have been an interesting matchup for me. So like, let's, um, this match literally ends up lagging the entire way. And I wasn't just going to sit here and waste time on the recording. So I end up just committing to the charm down completely and getting my first win. I'll take it considering I'm using a subscribers team and, uh... It, it wasn't the easiest team to use, <laughs> but anyhow, I'll take this one win. I need it because one other thing you have to take into consideration is I'm putting my rank and rating on the line for you guys. And as much as it's great content, I also want to at some point get to number one. So if I'm going to get a win this way, I'm going to take it. But anyhow, what would have been interesting about this match if we played it out is obviously I would have had the Wigglytuff on Altaria Lee, which I would have won. And he probably almost definitely would have swapped in Tentacruel. And I have Marowak in the back. And you would think maybe Tentacruel, you know, it's a water type battle, Bill. So Tentacruel would give your Marowak a hard time. But not exactly, because... As much as Tentacruel is a water type, it's also a poison type, and it doesn't have any water charge moves until it gets to Hydro Pump. And if the swap would have played out the way I assumed it would have played out, by the time he got to Hydro Pump, I could have shielded, and I can throw Bone Club, which would have dealt super effective damage to his uh, Tentacruel. So honestly, I think I still would have had a solid chance at winning this matchup anyway, but I guess we'll never know. So on that note, let's get into the second matchup. Uh, this team definitely 
relies on um, not taking shields because I'm clearly running double charmers, so I'm not charging up energy that quickly, which kind of sets this team back a little bit because there end up being some situations in the future where I wish I could have landed a charge move, but because charm just charges so slowly, it... I don't get my opponent's shields. Next match, I win lead again. I'm like, wow, I'm doing a solid for, you know, my subscribers that recommended teams, and Niantic's just paying me back because I won another lead in a row, and this person is not actually lagging, so that's that's important. But I charm him down. I got him, like, down two-thirds health. He throws a sky attack. I'm not going to shield it. I know I can survive. He goes for a swap and brings him Vigor off, and I had to think for a second because, again, I'm not used to using this team, and I'm like, do I want to bring in Marowak? And I do, and here's the main reason why. Yes, Vigor off has access to Bulldoze, but Bulldoze, as much as it's super effective, isn't a great charge move. It just really isn't. It needs some sort of buff in the future. The other moves that Vigoroth have are Counter and Body Slam, which would deal, like, double resisted damage to my Alolan Marowak, so honestly... Even if he lands a Bulldoze, which he's about to here, and I decide not to shield, you see I'm still in the yellow, his counters don't do anything, and the only other charge move he's going to get to after this would be a Body Slam, so I'm really not worried. Now, I'm going for the Bone Club. If he shields, even better, I can farm him down with Fire Spins. If he doesn't shield, which he doesn't, I end up taking out his uh, Vigor off, and I was even more okay with not shielding the Bulldoze, because I know his Altaria is going to come in like it's about to, and essentially just commit to a farm down on my Marowak. I go for the Bone Club here, Hoping that I can get his shields. Uh, hoping that he really wants to keep his Altaria alive. But I should have known he knew I had a Charmer. So it really wasn't worth it for him to keep it alive. And you notice that Bone Club doesn't even take out the Altaria. So I'm like, let's throw in Wigglytuff. It'll waste whatever energy he built up. And at this point, I'm actually in a solid situation. I go for this charge move here. Because he still has two shields. And I'm not really sure how this plays out. Yeah, I assume to myself between Wigglytuff and Clefable. And the fact that I have two shields, I should be able to charm him down completely. But I decided, you know what, let's get one of those shields. Clefable, with the amount of charms it's going to do, will most likely get to two charge moves. And let's just not take any chances and lose because of silliness. As silly as this team is. It really is a meme team, which is part of the reason why I wanted to use it. Because it just seemed fun. You know how I am with my double strats. I had double electric. I had double mud. I was like, why not try out double charm? And then my opponent sees my Clefable and decides to quit. Which I don't really blame him because... He wasn't going to take me down. I had two shields. My charms are going to get to him. So he didn't really have a chance in that in that match. So I'm off to a 2-0 start with the meme team, the double charm. Let's see how these next three battles go. So you could say I'm having fun with this team so far. You could also say there are some obvious weaknesses. And I'm 2-0 in the set, like I'll repeat. And that's a great start and all. And I'm really just hoping to myself I can win one of these three next matches so that I can benefit you guys with some subscriber content and I can still not let my rating get destroyed. Now let's get into this next match. I got a Wigglytuff on a Skarmory lead. Not a great matchup. But what was recommended by the subscriber that commented this on um, my other video was if you run into a Registeel, obviously it's a Skarmory, but it's a Steel type, same logic here, just completely... Commit to the charm down, do as much damage as you can, don't swap out, and then throw whatever charge moves you get to. So I'm like, you know what, I'll use that logic with the Skarmory, because if I swap in Marowak, he's bound to counter it, and then once Marowak's countered, I'm left with two Charmers to deal with Skarmory, which is not exactly a positive situation. So... I'm going for my Ice Beam here. It lands. Notice how we haven't used a Shield of Peace yet. And he actually decides to swap out and bring in Swampert, which I found interesting. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to keep in Wigglytuff and do as much charm damage as possible. There's no way I was going to swap in Marowak there. And if I swap in Clefable, I'm just committing to doing more charms. So I didn't really see a real point there. But anyhow, I know Swampert's mat, uh, moveset. You see Swampert all over my channel. It's most likely running Hydro... It's definitely running Hydro Cannon, and then it could either be running Sludge Wave or Earthquake. He baits me, though, with the first charge move. I'm really worried about the Sludge Wave. It'll one-shot my Clefable. He got my shield. He's going for another charge move here, and I'm like, you know what? Honestly, Swampert's almost done. If I let the Sludge Wave go through which it ends up being a sludge wave, so thankfully I shield. He could take me out, and then I'll really be screwed in this situation. But we're going to notice something very interesting about his team. So he brings a Skarmory back in. I swap immediately to my Marowak to try to preserve my Clefable for his last Pokemon as much as I possibly can. And also I'm hoping I can fire spin his Skarmory down and catch him off guard. And he actually leaves his Skarmory in here, which was interesting, and let me fire spin it down. I don't know if it was because the switch timer wasn't up or not, but look at his last Pokemon. Where have we seen that before? Mr. Tyler Durden, 
Welcome to the channel. Now, uh, hopefully you're a subscriber. That'd be pretty cool. That'd be pretty funny. That I end up running into you when I'm trying a meme team and I'm not running my double mud boy team. But honestly, I really don't run into double mud often when I run my own double mud. So that was funny. Uh, he goes for the mud bomb here. It's going to take out my Marowak. Oh, it doesn't take out my Marowak. I think he undercharged it. He knew that he needed extra energy to deal with my Clefable. And this ends up being the main issue that I mentioned earlier, is that these charms do not charge up energy enough. Notice how they're starting to chunk away at his health. He charged up a bunch. He's going to most likely go for a blizzard, which will take out a majority of my health. And he has one shield left. That one shield is such a problem. I couldn't get to enough charge moves to threaten that shield. So at this point, I'm just like... I'll try to commit to the charm down, but then I was like, I don't really know how much energy I have, so my best chance is to try and throw this Meteor Mash, and then to hope that I somehow have two, but I doubted it. He shielded, and we actually happened to CMP tie. I'm still pretty confident, though, that I didn't have um, another Meteor Mash ready, so that was my only real play. If I commit to the charm down, he just beats me to the charge move and ends up taking me out with a Mud Bomb. But look at that. What are the odds? Mud Boy team got featured on the other end of my video battles. But hey, you know what? Just another reason why you should try out Double Mud Boy. It beats Double Charm. <laughs> now, if you thought running into Double Mud Boy while I'm trying a Double Charm strat was interesting, just wait till you see the next team I run into. <laughs> oh, as we awkwardly sit here and wait for the finding opponent thing to load. I don't remember how long this ended up taking. Let's check out my rating while we're at it. I'm currently at 29.97. I've unfortunately dropped a little bit since I was 30 and 20 in my last video but since then because i did these bad this like the subscriber team was like the first set i did of this day and i did like four more afterwards i actually did bring my rating back up and i'm sitting at like 30 29 i think so that should make leaderboards there's been some issues with them we'll talk about that later but look at this first lead i got wiggly tough on mel metal and i'm like up oh, the algorithm knows what team I'm running now. They're really paying attention. They saw me get two wins with Double Charm. They need to make sure they put that to a stop. So not only do I run into a Mel Metal, but uh, let's wait till we get to the rest of his team. This entire thing is this entire match is a meme. But uh, he goes for a Rock Slide, which is obviously a smart thing to do. You don't want to throw superpowers. It's just Mel Metal is just gonna end up debuffing itself if you start throwing superpowers. Rock Slides do neutral damage. Superpower would technically deal neutral damage also. Because Wigglytuff's not just a fairy type, it's also a normal type. So even though fairy resists, the fighting move is super effective against excuse me, against a normal typing, so it neutralizes itself. But I let him take down my Mel Metal, and I'm hoping I can bring in my Marowak, fire spin down, and uh, get in that little extra damage before he throws a charge move. And I'm not able to, unfortunately. He does get to the rock slide, and I have to shield it. So I'm like, okay. And that's unfortunate. I really didn't want to have to use that shield there. But let's see what the rest of his team is. And he has a Skarmory in the back. So that's a second Steel type. And at this point, he has two shields. And I really want to threaten those shields. So no matter what, I'm committing to throwing these Shadow Balls. He ends up shielding it, which is fine by me. I really, like I said, really want these shields because Clefable in the back is not going to be able to threaten it. And in the last match, I lost because that Whiskash still had a shield. So if I start trying to bait and I don't get a shield, and then I end up not like doing the big charge move of Shadow Ball like I want to, and he still has a shield left over, then my Clefable in the back is going to be extra screwed in the final matchup. But essentially, the, the Melmetal and Wigglytuff and the Marowak and Skarmory kind of evened each other out because you'll notice we both don't have any shields now. His Sky Attack is going to come through and essentially put me in the red and take me out. I have like a minuscule amount of health, so I go for the instant swap. But his Skarmory is almost done. His third Pokemon is Jirachi. So I ran my double charm team and ran into a triple steel team. What are the odds? Why can't I run into that when I'm running double mud boys? They would have oh, they would have had a blast with this team. But uh, he goes for the Doom Desire. At this point, it's GG. I don't have a chance in anything to pull that match off. But uh, yeah, this entire like I said, this entire set was a meme. I thought that was so funny when I battled. I'm just like sitting there tapping. I'm like, he's got two steel types. And I see the Jirachi come out. I'm like, there's no way he's got a third steel type. But he did, and now I'm 2-2 two and two in the set, and I'm praying this last matchup against Faust will go better. But we're not off to a great start with this lead. I got a Wigglytuff on Bassidon lead here, and this is probably the worst Pokemon to run into out of 
any Pokemon this team can face, and you'll notice in a moment. But I'll explain because you might be thinking Registeel would be just as bad, but at least with Registeel, Marowak has a solid matchup with Registeel. Whereas here with Bastiodon, not only do these charms do absolutely nothing, Wigglytuff's charge moves do absolutely nothing. So that's why I didn't shield the Stone Edge that I came through. I had no intentions of committing to um, Wigglytuff trying to take out this Bastiodon. But he's going to take out my Wigglytuff. I got him in the yellow, which is really nothing. And I have to bring in Marowak. And the difference between Bastiodon and Registeel is that Bastiodon has Smackdown and Stone Edge. So Bastiodon has a pretty positive matchup against Marowak, whereas Marowak kind of walls Registeel. So I would have much preferred to run into a Registeel lead here. And this team has a huge weakness. Like, this is... A, a ginormous weakness against Bassidon because n there's really not much damage I can do. I can throw a super effective Bone Club, but that's got to be like the weakest ground type move in the game. It's either between that or Bulldoze. Both of those moves are trash. But uh, I'm just going to keep on trying to uh, churn out these um, Bone Clubs and hopefully take out this Bassidon and pray that whatever he has in the back is super weak to charm. And he does let that one through, luckily. But then his next Pokemon is Haunter. And Haunter isn't as big of a weakness as Bastiodon is, but it is still a bit of an issue because Haunter would slaughter Marowak and it would slaughter Clefable. I was hoping, okay, before, <laughs> there's a lot to talk about here. <laughs> I didn't shield that because I was hoping he was baiting me. My only chance is that being a shadow punch and me possibly charming down his Haunter. So that's why I let that through. So I ended up obviously clearly losing that match. The Shadow Ball took out my Clefable and then he Shadow Clawed my Marowak once and I, and my, Marowak went down from it, but um, I was really hoping that was a bait But the reason why Haunter is also a weakness But not as big of a weakness there is because if that Haunter would have fell on Wigglytuff I would have had a positive matchup there because Wigglytuff has that normal typing So it would still double resist all of Haunter's moves like Shadow Claw, Shadow Ball, and Shadow Punch And almost barely anybody's running Sludge Bomb on their Haunters in GBO So yes, Haunter was another weakness, but it wasn't as bad considering Against Wigglytuff, I would have had a positive matchup. But Bastion slaughters this team. So, that is the double charm strat. Now, for my first ever rating of a subscriber's team. Uh, where would I list this on a scale of 1 to 10? And I feel like maybe I should add more criteria to it. Because, I mean, maybe as I start to do these videos more and more often, I'll add criteria to it. But for now, on a list of 1 to 10 from... I don't recommend it all to I highly recommend for go battle league and I don't want this to come off rude so I'm apologizing right now I think I would honestly rank this as a one or a two I would not recommend this team at all and the main reasons why are what you saw in the last three matchups now I will preface that negativity with some positivity. So preface is not the right word to use there. But anyhow, I will counter that negativity with some positivity. If you could avoid steel types, this team can have some play. You did see in my second match, the one that didn't lag, that I was able to actually win. And Altaria is important to the meta and Azumarill is imp are important to the Go Battle League meta. And the Charmers can definitely handle them. Absolutely. The biggest issue though is steel is in a lot of different parts of the meta. There's just way too much, there are way too many steel types in the Go Battle League meta, like Registeel, like Melmetal, like Skarmory, like Jirachi, like we clearly saw in this video, where it's not safe to run this team. The only way you're gonna have any, um, the only way you're going to have any success with this team is praying to the algorithm gods that you just completely avoid steel. And with Registeel being like the main pillar in Great League Go Battle League battles, it's going to be nearly impossible to use this team and have that success. And even though I didn't face Registeel as a lead and get to try out the subscriber's um, recommendation for that specific situation... I did run into a bunch of other steel types and it, it's just not enough of a play to make me feel comfortable by saying maybe you should try this team because I, I, I don't I don't think you should and I apologize I'm trying to be nice don't roast me in the comments and don't say I'm being mean I really I really try to be nice about this but I did go two and three like that was great but one of the matches was lag uh, other than that though 
please recommend some more teams. Like I said, no, no harm, no foul to the person that recommended this to me. I appreciate who that was for recommending me a team. It was a ton of fun to use. I was sitting there doing my, my five battles and I was laughing the entire time. It was tons of positivity. I really enjoyed using the team. It's just not one that I can recommend. So the first real team that I'm giving a rating for out of these subscriber videos, I'm going to give it a two. If you feel like you're never going to see a steel type, then you can take that chance and try out this team. But don't say I recommended it, please. But um, other than that, yeah, please, comment section. Comment me more teams on this video, and I'll try to have maybe two of these videos out a week. I'll try. I'll try. I'll try my best. I have been posting a lot of Sylph content, so I need to get back on that too. Forest Cup's been pretty big. I do have a set of Sylph battles that I definitely want to uh, get uploaded soon too. But, like, you guys don't like Sylph as much, so, like, what's up with that? Guys, we gotta like take Go Battle League and gain that PvP skill and start aiming it towards Sylph. Cause like Sylph is really where it's at. I love Sylph. So I'm gonna try my best to stop appreciating all these views. Cause like these Go Battle League videos do numbers. And I'm gonna try and put out more Sylph stuff. The Sylph stuff doesn't do numbers though. And like I'm just starting out. I gotta build. So you guys put me in a tough situation. All right, let me stop blaming other people. I'm gonna blame myself. <laughs> Anyhow. Don't forget, like, comment, subscribe. I appreciate all you guys. You guys have been giving me a ton of love since I've entered this YouTube PvP Pogo community. And I'll see you guys in the next video.